I'm Flinder Boyd, a former GB international and 10-year uh, career professional basketball player around Europe, um, and now I'm a sports journalist. <laughs> You didn't grow up in England. You developed as a basketball player over in the States, then you played internationally, then you came and played in the BBL. Can you talk me through your journey, but also the different experiences you had before playing in the BBL? Well, before the BBL, I, I grew up in California. I developed there, went to the college system, and then I played in France and Spain uh, before coming to the BBL. I have British parents, so I have a British passport, so I played, played with the GB team. Uh, but yeah, it was a very different experience playing over in Europe and then playing in the BBL. In Europe, it's much more, of, well, every country's a little bit different, but Europe's much more professional. You're practicing twice a day. Your whole life is concentrated on basketball. Mm -hmm. We're here in the BBL, maybe you'll practice once a day. A lot of times, a lot of the players have to have other jobs. It's almost a semi-professional league in some ways. Mm -hmm. So just the quality isn't quite there the way it is maybe in, say, France or Spain or, or some of the top leagues in Europe. So a lot of people see the BBL as a development league instead of actual professional league. Now, what can we do to change that perception of the actual league in the UK or what needs to be done to the BBL to move it away from that? Well, it's not far off. There's a lot of really good players in the BBL, a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players come out of the BBL. So it's not like it's a poor league. I mean, obviously one of the fundamental issues is the fan base, you know, not being on TV, not having the, the revenue coming in. You know, in Europe, a lot of these teams are funded by the city council or funded by the, 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 the county itself. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here in Britain, a lot of the funding, it's all shoestring, a few sponsors here and there. Um, you know, and then the other thing is, is the de development coming up. There are teams now that have just started to develop players at a young age. The Leicester Riders do a great job with that, the Newcastle Eagles, where they develop players from kind of a college age, even younger, and, and try and work them through the system to the professional league. It's only been the last few years where players could legitimately grow up in England, stay in England their entire uh, youth career, and play professionally. You know, before, British players that grew up here, they'd have to go to the U.S. to develop. They went to Spain. Joel Freeland went to Spain. Dan Clark. Dan Clark. So I think the development is key, but also the exposure, you know, facilities too have to improve. Are you saying that the accessibility of basketball is not so much now or has it improved from when you came to play the BBL? Well the ironic thing is basketball has always been really popular you know here in London it's the second most popular youth sport so it's always been really popular there just hasn't been the facilities there just hasn't been the coaching system there hasn't been the level of coaching you know for players to really develop and that's something that the GB team when the GB got the funding for the Olympics, that was something that they were supposed to help out with to build the grassroots. And it has, there's been, there has been progress, but there's still a long ways to go. If, if Britain wants to compete at the highest level in Europe, it has to start, you know, at the youth level and build up. But the BBL has taken a big initiative for that. A lot of the teams have really tried to work on the grassroots level. And I think it's a matter of time, 10 years, 15 years, before you start to see some really top-level British players born and raised and, and gone through the British system. So what, so what do you think of the UK sports cutting the funding for British basketball and now just focusing on medal? You know, how many medals an organization have won or the sports have won? We know that GB hasn't won any Olympic medals and it's not going to take five years to develop. To get to that point, we know it's going to take longer. What, what's your feelings at all? Because of course you were a GB athlete and it just affected, at that time affected your program and now it's going to affect future programs. Well listen, if you, if you look at it strictly through the, metal, the lens of medals, okay, you understand the reasoning. Basketball is an expensive sport for the Olympics. You've got a lot of players, you've got a lot of coaches. There's only the possibility of one medal. And Britain is so far behind some of the top teams in Europe. But on the other hand, it's tragic because if you want to build something for the Olympics, you know, 12 years from now, 16 years from now, you've got to start now. You can't all of a sudden fund the team, you know, in eight years and think they're going to win a medal four years after that. That doesn't make any sense. And I think also there's this, within the basketball community, we almost feel like there's this, this 
uh, a little bit of classism going on, you know, where you've got basketball as an urban sport, you know, largely minority and black here in, in London and Birmingham, Manchester and places like that. So, you know, if, if there's funding, you know, basketball can grow and develop, good players can, can come out of Britain and we can have a legitimately good GB team. When we had funding before the Olympics with the Wild Dang, with Pop Mensawanzu, Joel Freeland, a lot of these really great players who have grown up in Britain, the GB team was in the Olympics and competed with the top teams, lost to Spain by one point, the one of the second best team in the world. I mean, there's no reason why GB can't be a top level British team with funding. Do you think we're doing a good job of promoting our own basketball heroes in the UK, whether it's in the BBL or the NBA or the Euro League? Are we doing a good job of promoting what we already have, but also what we could have in the future? Uh, promoting our heroes is difficult. I mean, because if, if basketball doesn't have the exposure, a lot of people don't know who these people are. You promote It's kind of a, a circular thing. If they don't know who the heroes are, how, how can we promote them? So, I mean, the wild thing during the Olympics, there were billboards of him. You know, Pops, I remember, you know, he was he was doing some promotional stuff. So I think that's really important to promote the, the players who grew up here, who are basketball stars. But, you know, how, would, how, do you, how do you do that exactly? You know, do, do sponsors do that? Are you going to get McDonald's or Subway or something to put money into players that a lot of people don't know? Business-wise, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense. I remember when I was playing with the GB team, we walked down through London with Luau Dang, who made more money professionally than Wayne Rooney at the time, and no one knew who he was. And he was a huge basketball star in America. I mean, that's got to change if basketball is going to become a big sport here. Now, the BBC is going to show the BBL finals on BBC. What is this going to mean for the game of basketball in the UK? Well, it's big. It is big. I mean, there was a time 15, 20 years ago when the BBL was on TV all the time. Um, and it's gone down a lot. And I think it'd be good if people can see the talent level that's here, see some of the top players that are playing here, some of the top British players that are playing here, um, build some excitement. I mean, I, I think it's, it's really a, a foundation. You get one game on TV, next year you put a few more on TV, you build a small base, because there is a small base here. You expand your base. You know, there's no reason why you can't show the BBL once a week and have a solid base, a solid amount of people watching the game. Now, a lot of people talk about being involved with basketball at the grassroots level and what it means to young people. In your opinion, for somebody that's played as a young person and then through to college and internationally, what skills do you think young people are taking away from the game of basketball? Oh, everything. I mean, you know, I grew up playing basketball and everybody I knew growing up played basketball. And I mean, it sounds kind of cheesy, but it's a little bit like you, you get a lot of skills that you're going to need later on in life, discipline, you know, teamwork, you know, all these types of things. Um, and, I, you know, I think basketball is the ultimate team sport. It is. You've got five guys on the court. You've got one basketball. You've got one tiny hole. You've got 24 seconds to get that ball in the hole. Like, you've got to think fast. Everybody's got to work together. You've got to put your egos aside. You know, I, I think it's the ultimate team sport. Why did you fall in love with basketball? Yeah, it's a, that's an interesting question. I think I love the energy and the speed and the excitement and the athleticism. It's almost like jazz, like anything can happen at any given moment. And I think that's, it, when it's played at its highest level, it's such a beautiful sport, such a beautifully aesthetic sport.